good evening and welcome to All About the Face with me, Nathan. And me, Lee Anderson. <laughs> What were we talking about? There? I have no idea because you started it. I uh, hello, good evening. Good. Well, it's hello, David, David evening, Frost and, and David Frost, and David Dibbleby, and David Dibble Dibble Dibbleby. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's my favourite. <laughs> he's my favourite. I love it. David Dimble Dumbledy, the yes. famous amp designer. Um, oh yeah. Oh, my anyway, God, I tell you, I'm pushing through, guys. Not in that way, in a different way. I was very drunk last night at the Anderson's Christmas party. And I thought, I know what I'd love to do the day after a Christmas party with an enormous hangover. I'd like to make some bass videos with uh, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to the party, so I, I feel you pretty good. You were invited, though. I know I was. Thank you for that. I'm sorry That's I couldn't fine. make it. No, I was, um, there was something on telly I wanted to <laughs> mm. Yeah. X-Factor final. Because no, I'm a professional, I didn't want to come in hungover today. Wow. Fair enough. Never stop you any other time. No, it's true. Um, so, <laughs> so earlier in 2016, Anderson started stocking the very cool guitar and bass range of Reverend guitars. Hallelujah! And uh, yeah, absolutely. And after we found Reverend Green in the billiard room with Praise the lead the piping, we did a couple of uh, bass videos uh, two or three months back on the Macaulay and the um, and the Dub Star, which is the sort of semi-solid one. And there's two more bases in the range that we haven't covered yet: the Thunder Gun uh, and the Decision. Which I must admit, I, I suspect is... Uh, do you think they've called it decision just because it rhymes with precision? Oh! Do you think that's... Because it's not really a P-base, is it? They're Nothing just, like one. <clears throat> you know, so perhaps that isn't. Um, so... Maybe they couldn't think about what to call it. And somebody said, we need a, a decision. We need a decision. And they went, that'll do. That'll do. Um, so this is a Carina-bodied uh, guitar, as are all the um, Reverend guitars and basses, with a 34-inch scale. Uh, so, you know, traditional bass scale length. Um, big, heavy duty, high mass uh, bridge here with like a, what do they call it? Like a lockdown bridge? Yeah, the, the, each saddle has got um, like an Allen key sort of uh, thing that goes through it. So when it's all nicely, uh, you know, intonated, you can just screw that down and it won't wander off. Looks like you can string through the body or- You can. Or through the bridge you if can. you want to. 53 bolts holding the neck on. <laughs> Um, this neck ain't going nowhere. Yeah, Look although, you know, when I, was, I, I, I had the pleasure of spending some time with Ken, the guy that owns Reverend recently. Praise and, the Lord! And that is, a, that is a, an actual, you know, a concerted effort by them to, to try and eradicate that very slight sort of lateral movement that you get on <coughs> Well, I hate that designs. lateral movement. Absolutely. Uh, so that's why they have... Uh, uh, eight bolts. Well, there's six bolts and then two small ones in the middle. I don't, I, they don't look big enough to go all the way through, but perhaps they are. I don't know. Um, got this interesting five-piece uh, neck. It looks like uh, maple with two bits of, I don't know what they are, rosewood or walnut or something that travel through the... Walnut, probably. It's like a Battenberg, isn't it? It certainly is. Um, vanilla and... Vanilla, vanilla and chocolate. And is that what it is? Yeah. A Battenberg neck. Yeah. Um, That's why they need the eight bolts, otherwise it just crumbles. It's not, I suspect it's not. It's it not. is walnut. Is it? Did you know that? Yeah, Pete just pointed at it on the screen. Look. There you go. Uh, maple and walnut. Mm. My favourite nut. Yeah, it is. Actually, um, I like almonds. Nah. Smoked. Very expensive, though. You know I, yeah. I tell you, the most expensive nuts, but they're very nice. It's macadamia nuts. Do you like those? I don't, know if, I don't know if I've ever had they, macadamia. They the, they're Australian nuts, and they're like marbles, and they're really nice. Macadamia. I bought some pistachios the other day, thinking that I really like them. and now I, really, I, I like a bit of a faff, though, aren't they? Uh, yeah. A lot of work, really. A lot of work for a nut. But you wished you'd never tuned in, don't you? <laughs> What's your favourite nut? Maybe you'd like to um, comment below. We want to know. I like dry roasted. Oh, the man for the common people. Yeah. Just it's good like... old-fashioned plaints. it planters? Hey, planters? Do you remember when you were, this, when we were younger, into the cinema, Cape and the advert at the beginning of every film was, hey, Crusader, have you any nuts? And then, and then all the sort of teenage boys in the audience would chuckle about how funny it was that someone had said nuts. Don't you remember that? No, I don't. Hey, Crusader, have you any nuts? We've got mixed nuts and peanuts, raisins and something. Around. Anyway. I don't remember that. No, Pearl and Dean, I remember that. Obviously, that's all highly relevant to where we're going next. Highly reverent. This, um, reverent. <laughs> highly reverent. Hallelujah. Um, so, what else is new about it? So, Decision Base is kind of like a... Got this elongated uh, horn at the top here. Oh! Big cutaway here. Um, and two pickups on the decision. Um, the first one here, despite the fact that it kind of looks like a big humbucker, is actually more like a, a split P-Base style pickup. Because yeah, initially then, you think, oh, it's a stingray. 
But yeah, then when you look closer. Yeah. And then the rails at the back here are, I presume, you know, that is, although it doesn't look like a humbucker, is a humbucker, basically, that like two smaller coils next to each other. Yeah. Um, in a range of colours that shall appear as if by magic on your screen now. Let's give them a hear. Let, let, what, what have we got? So we've got this, this enormous, <coughs> this the pan. Oh yeah, that's got the Yeah, yeah, Control, controls wise. You got a master vol, obviously volume, does both pickups. Tone, uh, again, does both pickups, it's passive. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just um, a sweep between the front pickup all the way to the back pickup only. And then in the middle, yeah, with the deton, deton. as you correctly identified, is both pickups sort of full wax. So uh, let's have a listen. Do you want have a, li a listen. little listen? Yeah. So front pickup. A tone off. It it doesn't it, it doesn't quite have the clarity, I think, at the top end that the we were just in the video before did some of the new Fender Pro series um, jazz and, and P basses. Mm. And uh, this is this sounds a little darker, I think, but but possibly punchier as well. Let's try um, it with the pick. See yeah. what the front pickup sounds like with the pick. Different. Good fat it it, it sounds sound, different it? to a P bass. It put does, it doesn't it? I mean, again, you'd have to go and. Uh, literally watch one video after the other to see what we mean. We're basically using the same amp and the same settings on the front of the amplifier as we were for the for the Fender video. So it's a good way of comparing how it how it sounds. Yeah. Let's hear that uh, back pickup. Yep, the back pickup. <laughs> Same kind of vibe, I think. It's 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 not as um, glassy sounding at the top end, uh, but it's got a little bit more thump in there, I think. So I guess it just depends on what your what, what you know what you want. What we, what about with both pickups on? Hey, let's find out. riff that you play dun, 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 dun. is that just like shop demo riff that you've learned <laughs> from many moons ago why do i just play it over and over and over it's, again? it's a fairly re constant feature of your bass demonstrations but i like it that's why i was asking is it is it is it something that you it, i don't know it just is it's my, a thing. It's my one lick obviously it's your, it's your lick <laughs> <laughs> i'll be found out i'll get my coat so what else it, it it looks like and again you'll have to say it looks like it's got more of a P bass kind of neck. It looks fatter it than a jazz. Yeah, I would say that is definitely the case. Definitely P bass um, era. Yeah, and so I guess it's kind of leaning on the sort of the P bass side of things from a, from a feel. Yeah. Looks wise, obviously, it's very unique. As a most Reverend guitars are, are you know, a very unique sort of style. Yeah. Um, comfy to play. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, feels good. I like the cut. You have got a nice kind of contour here, haven't you? So oh, that's lovely. A bit of go. bit of comfort there. Yeah. You can get up the dusty end nice and easy. That's kind of nice. The cutaway there. <laughs> that's not funny. Um, should you want to venture up there? I well, you know, everybody likes to have a venture up there periodically, don't they? Um, <laughs> So right, so let's look at the uh, let's look at the Thunder Gun. Now the Thunder Gun, as the name uh, suggests, I guess, is a bit Thunderbird inspired because you've got this um, raised middle bit like you would have uh, on, a, on a Thunderbird. I see. And if anything, I know that the scratch plate is almost going there. Um, the headstock kind of looks a bit sort of Firebirdy, doesn't it? But I guess that's just almost a Reverend kind of thing rather than Hallelujah. this particular bass. Um, and we have got now quite a different sort of setup. So we've got a rosewood fingerboard, a bound rosewood fingerboard, a set neck, I believe now, rather than bolt on, isn't it? <gasps> yeah. Yes. Set neck. Um, and we've got the same uh, neck pickup here, this sort of split P-base thing, but we've got a full fat 
uh, humbucker, much more like the sort of thing that you would see on a Stingray or you know, like a Music Man Stingray. Mm. But it is all still passive. Um, and we've got the same three controls that we had on the other one. So let's have a little listen without changing any of the settings on the amp as to what that does in terms of <coughs> tone. Okay. Uh, <coughs> well, I guess, should we do the back one? <coughs> front, one, want, front, front one's going to be the same, isn't it? Surely. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know? You know, right. Everything's different on different guitars. And front one first, then. Let's do it. <laughs> Right, back pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's got some more yeah, output, hasn't it? Way more. So, uh, both pickups then. It's going yep. to sound like this. Try it with a bit of drive, Nath. I like that. That's a good sounding bass. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I think that's very cool. Um, what else is there to, to sort of tell you? Is there any discernible feel difference going between the two? Uh, I, I, obviously, this one's got like a, a sort of, uh, you know, a finish on the neck. So that's uh, going to be slightly different. A little bit more. It's got, this is like a satin sort of finish. Yeah, it's a bit stickier feel. A bit stickier. Yeah. No, it's, it's cool. It's, it does feel different, but yeah. just different. Not be better or worse, just different. So, okay. uh, well, that just about wraps it up, doesn't it, for the old Reverend basses? Absolutely, and we thought, uh, as we're doing Reverend, uh, Reverend basses and guitars, we should do, we should do a little homage to uh, Reverend Billy Gibbons from the Church of Tone. Hallelujah! Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll just play something, and I don't know, this is probably not a terribly exciting bass part for you, so feel free to flower it up if you would like to. <laughs> 